this is our second spirit day and today is pajama day so we get to wear our pajamas all day long and I hope that you are um, having fun with our spirit week so far today's reading lesson is going to be continuing with our theme of forces and motion last week we read a big book about forces and now today we're going to begin our second big book on motion. So it's titled Motion, so think for a minute of what that's going to be about, what that might look like. Uh, probably going to have something to do with movement, and we're going to take a look right now. So here we see motion, and right on the very front cover, friends, we see somebody, wow, doing some amazing things with, it looks like, a jet ski or a wave runner of some kind. So think for just a moment of what this might be about. Um, has to do with movement. We see a real photo. And I'm going to do a quick flip through the book for you to make some predictions. What do you think that this might be about? I see some beautiful pictures in here, boys and girls. We see real photos. Oh, we see some what do we call these? Labels. And I think we even have some captions here. So right away, we can predict that this is an oh. going to be an informational text. So today, during our lesson, we are going to be breaking down the story. That It's actually not really a story. It's informational text. And we're going to be looking at key detail, details. So first, we're going to go through and just listen to the narrator read our story. So it is titled, Motion by Joy Brewster. And we see we have a table of contents. And we'll begin here. Words to think about. <clears throat> direction. The direction of a moving pinwheel is around and around. Fast. An airplane and a jet ski are fast ways to travel. Motion. When birds fly, the birds are in motion. Position. The position of the chair is on the sand. Slow. A kayak and hot air balloons are slow ways to travel. Speed. A bicycle rider moves at a faster speed than a walker. So just real quick, take a look at these pictures one more time. We have direction, fast, motion, position, slow, and speed. All of these have to do with motion. Introduction. <clears throat> A plane passes overhead. A kite soars in the sky. Waves crash on the beach. A pelican dives into the water. All of these objects are in motion. Motion is when something is moving. You can describe the motion of objects. This book will show you how. At the beach and all around you, Objects are in motion. So boys and girls, if you happen to be outside, look up, look around you. You might be surprised at how many things are in motion around you each day. Chapter 1. What is position? Every object has a position. A position is a place where you can find an object. If an object changes its position, then the object is moving. You can describe motion by telling how an object's position changes. The position of the kite is above the beach. The position of the flying disc is in the girl's hand. You know this boat has moved because the boat is in a different position compared to the pier. Look at text structure. Cause and effect. 
Find the word if. This word helps us understand a cause. The cause is an object being in a different position. What is the effect? Which word helps us understand the effect? So if and then, which is what we have spoken about before, if and then are cause and effect relationships. Next page, this is chapter two, what is speed? Chapter two, <clears throat> what is speed? Speed is how fast or slow an object moves from one position to another. You can describe motion by telling an object speed. Many objects change their speed as they move. This turtle moves at a slow speed. Did you know? Sea turtles swim faster than they walk. This motorboat moves at a fast speed. So before we go on in our story, well, you know what? I changed my mind. We'll keep reading. We're going to read all the way through and then we'll go back. Chapter 3. What is direction? Direction is the path an object follows as it moves. You can describe motion by telling an object's direction. Objects can move in many different directions. What directions can you see on these pages? Up and down. Curved line. Zigzag. Straight line, around and around, back and forth. Chapter 4. How does motion change? An object's motion does not stay the same. An object can start moving, speed up, slow down, and stop. An object can also change direction. Pushing or pulling can change an object's motion. These boats are changing direction as they move. Figure it out. What are some ways that your body's motion changes when you play tag with friends? Pulling changes the motion of the rope. Conclusion Objects are in motion all around you. You can describe motion by telling how objects change position over time. You can describe the speed and direction of moving objects. The motion of objects can change. Describing motion. Position, speed, direction. Okay, and that concludes our story on motion, our book. So now we're going to go back and break down the chapters one at a time and kind of outline what they're about by writing down the key details, going over the key details. So starting with this page, chapter one is what is position? So think for a moment of what we talked about going back to the very beginning of motion um, is a position. A position is a place where you can find an object and you can move that position. That position can change by moving it and when you do that, that is considered a motion. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this chart here nice big chart. Chapter one is what is position? So key details. Place where you find an object. An object can change. And you can tell how the position changes to describe that motion. So all of these things together describes what a position is. Now we're going to go back and take a look now at chapter two. Chapter two is, what is speed? So speed, and it's in dark, is how fast or slow that an object moves. That's how fast or slow. You can describe motion by telling an object speed. And 
the speed can change. You can speed up or you can slow down. So going back to our chart, we have here, what is speed? It is how fast or slow something moves. We can tell the speed by describing the motion and that speed can change. All of these have to do with speed. Chapter three is our next chapter on direction. So what is direction? Direction is the path an object follows. You can tell the direction of an object and describe the motion of it. So you can describe motion by telling an object's direction. So these are all of the different ways that you can describe that motion. It can be up and down, that's a direction, a curved line, a zigzag line, a straight line, around and around, or back and forth. So taking a look at our chart, it's exactly what we have here. What is direction? It's the path an object follows. You can tell the direction an object moves and describe the motion. And these are some of them, the up and down, curved line, zigzag, straight line, around and around, and back and forth. So those are just a few examples of direction. Our last chapter, chapter four, is how does motion change? Objects can change their speed or their direction. An object's motion does not stay the same. It can speed up, it can slow down. A pushing or a pulling can change the object's motion. So these boats are changing the direction as they move. Here, the people are changing the direction by pulling the motion. I'm sorry, pulling the rope, which changes the motion of the rope. So our last and final on our chart here is how does motion change? Objects can change its speed or direction and pushing or pulling can also change the motion. So this is just a nice little um, chart that lays out the four chapters on position, speed, direction, and motion. Now we're going to whoops, go on to some other skills that we will be doing with our story on motions now. So again, we are going to be referring to this book on motion. So the first one is talking about cause and effect again. We're going to turn back to page six and seven in our book. And it says, what cause and effect statement could we make about the photo? Take a look at the photo of the kite right here. What cause and effect statement could we make about the photo with the kite? What signal words would you use? It says the position of the kite is above the beach. So what positional word could we use to describe the kite? Would be the word above. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and underline that right now so that it stands out. So above would be a positional word to describe the kite. As we read, we can pay attention to the cause and effect relationships and look for signal words such as if and then. Let's take a look over here on page seven. It says, if an object, so I'm gonna underline if, if an object changes its position, then the object is moving. We read these words, if and then, they are signal words that help us to see the cause and effect relationship of what's going on with the position of these objects. I can ask myself, what is the cause? The cause is an object changing, is an object changes its position. What's the effect? The effect 
is what happens from that cause. So for instance, if we go up here, I'm going to get rid of my pencil real quick. It says if an object changes its position, that means it changes the direction it's going, its position, then the object is moving. So now it's going to move differently. It says you can describe the motion by telling how an object's position changes. So like for instance, a sailboat. You know that the sailboat is moving because the boat is in a different position here than it is over here. So if the sailboat turns a certain direction, it's going to move and be somewhere else. So here we have a cause and an effect relationship. Throughout the story, there might be some other cause and effect relationships. Taking a look here, we see our sea turtle. The sea turtle does not move as fast on the sand. Why? Well, the sand provides friction. It makes it hard for any of us to move very quickly. But in the water, it said that the sea turtle moves faster. So if the sea turtle is in the water, he can move faster than if he is on sand. So there's all kinds of cause and effect relationships, boys and girls. You can go back through this story and see if you can find some others. We're going to now move on to learning a little bit more about the table of contents. So going back to the beginning of our book, we see our table of contents, and I know you're very familiar with that. The table of contents helps us to know what we're going to be reading about. And we see here that it's broken down. I know we've already talked about our four chapters. If we look back over here on our chart, we already have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and chapter four. So this is just another reference to our table of contents, which makes this an informational text. Using the table of contents helps us to go immediately to whatever we might be interested in learning about. If we want to know about what a position is, then we would go and turn to page six. If we wanted to know what the speed was about something or what speed has to do with motion, we would go to page eight. The direction would be on page 10, and of course, how motion changes on page 12. And we can also note, also note in our table of contents, it says there's words to think about on page two, introduction on page four. We can take a quick peek of those. And here we have words to think about on page two and introduction on page four. We also see at the back, we have the conclusion on page 14 and the glossary and index on page 16. So if we go all the way to the very back of our book, we see our glossary and our index on page 16, and our conclusion is here on page 14. And that concludes our reading for today, Tuesday, May 12th, Pajama Day. I hope you enjoyed reading the book with us on motion learned a little bit more about motion and what it means for objects to change their position and some cause and effect relationships. And if you ever read books that have a table of contents, take a look at that table of contents before you begin reading. See if you can find the chapters. And that concludes our reading for today. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoy wearing your pajamas all day, boys and girls. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.